Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Come On CFL, brought to you by Bet99. Please be sure to bet responsibly and use our code COMEON99, capital letters C-O-M-E-O-N-99, and you have up to a $1,500 match on your first bet. We are here with episode, is this five? Yes, this is five, Rudy. Episode five for Come On CFL. I have with me today, as usual, the one, the only Nick Taylor, three-time Grey Cup champion, who was our CFL expert, yet he cannot pick games to save his life, as well as I pick MMA fights. Okay, so, okay. You know I was about to throw that back uh, out there, so, man. Come on. What was uh, – let's, let's do a recap real fast. Nick, tell me who won, how'd it go, and did you get the game right? Did I get the game right? So, obviously, these teams are trying to lose in spite of my picks because – it shouldn't go down that way. They are doing everything they can to lose because I picked them. I don't know why. I, I, all I did was bring good, hard energy to the CFL League. You'll think that people will honor me and play hard and, and do what they have to do just to get the win. But, you know, people want to make a fool of me, but they won't make a fool of me this week because I will be right all this week. But last week, what we had, how we started off the week, we started off with Sass against Montreal, man. Um, a good game should have been a good game if, both quarterbacks are healthy and playing, but we get both backup quarterbacks and we get the backup running back for Sass. And um, in this game, Sass come out hot. They jump up 16 to 3 at halftime. They're running the ball. They're pounding Montreal. They can't stop them. The backup running back, Frankie Hickson, has over 100 yards in the first half. They're looking great, man. Uh, the backup quarterback for Montreal is struggling. Caleb Evans is 9 for 17. He can't hit the side of a barn. He's just missing the throws, but his receivers aren't helping him a couple of times either. They dropped some balls. Um, he has a big fumble. And the second half, he comes out for the first possession. And coach say, hey, that's enough. Seen enough of you. We can't get it done with you. You're not winning for us. They bring in the backup quarterback, the backup to the backup. They bring in my guy, David Alexander. A couple years in the league as a backup and hasn't really got much playing time. The kid comes in and gives them a spark. 15 for 18, Rudy, in the second half. Just getting thrown in the game, man. He go with two touchdowns. He should have been sacked a couple of times. He makes some plays happen. He gets the lead for the guys, man. And they don't look back. They don't give up a point to Montre to um, Sass in the second half. Um, their run game that was so great in the first half becomes fucking a non-factor. Nothing gets done for them. Um, Montreal defense steps up. This is why they're the defending champions because their defense leads the way. Um, Sass gets nothing done in the second half. Scores zero points. They get the drive at the end of the game. To, 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 to take the lead, and they pressure them. They send blitzes every play, or they sent fake blitzes, and they either got their hand on the ball or the quarterback just couldn't handle the Shea Patterson. So um, the backup quarterback come in and lead the, lead lead them to the win. They're at the top of the league again. Um, they're 6-1, and one, and they're, they're rolling, man. They get the win after Sass had the lead, and they had me looking good. I was about to tell Rudy. I was about to text Rudy and say, yep, Rudy, I want to know this week, but nope. They blew the game. I mean, it's you, pick, you, you picked against the number one team in the league. That's well, they both, they both had the same record at that time. I believe more in SAS backup quarterback to get the job done. But they head coach is just a puppet master right now. He, Jason Moss is pulling all the right strings. He pulls out the quarterback at halftime or after halftime, gives him a drive, and the backup quarterback come in and do what he does. Like, nobody even thinking about this guy coming in the game. He comes in, he lights it up, 15 for 18, two touchdowns. He gets everything going. He scores the ball in the second half, 17 points. He, he, like, who's expect that? But Jason Moss is showing that he's a great coach right now. He's pulling all the right strings. He's making all the right plays. Him and his defensive coordinator, they are just dialed in right now. They're just a tremendous team, and they get their starting quarterback back this week. Cody Fajardo gets, comes back this week. More than likely, that's what it's looking like. So they should be up and rolling and doing what they've been doing the whole year. Um, let's roll to the next game, man. Calgary and Ottawa, um, 33-6. to After Calgary comes off a big win against BC, and I started talking good about them, you know what? They come out and do it. They lay a fucking egg. But you know what I did see? I said I wanted Ottawa to win the game against a good team and show me that they're really, you know, what their records say they were. They were 4-2 and two before that game. And I still, I still didn't believe in them. But they come out and they punch Calgary and they shit. They have this young returner, this young playmaker. Um, let me get his name right. I don't want to say it wrong. Khalil Pimpleton. He gets seven catches for 80 yards, but he has a big change of momentum. 
punt return for 99 yards. He just makes Calgary look silly and stupid. He shakes a few players, and then it's off to the races, and nobody can catch this young man. He's just a, a blur. He's becoming a new weapon for Drew Brown. Drew Brown goes 30 for 37. He dices up the defense of Calgary. After Calgary, just last game, got in BC, faced some of the best receivers in the league, and they play press man. They come in this game, and they play static zone, static zone, static zone, and Drew Brown just eats it alive, like – just do whatever he want, whenever he wanted. He just looked fantastic. And Drew Brown is becoming a, a top quarterback in his league. And um, shout out to Bobby Dice, man. I'm happy for him as a coach. He finally got a turn around in Ottawa. I was a, uh, I played for him when I first got to the league in SAS, man. And then he was the special team coordinator in Ottawa. And he finally got the job as a head coach. And it's been tough sledding for him at the beginning. And this year is a decisive year for him. I'm pretty sure if he didn't get the, with some wins, they're probably going to demote him or release him or or fire him, and he comes out this year, and he has the team rolling. And Ottawa, they're back jumping over there, man, on Bank Street. It's jumping, and they're playing good ball. And shout-out to Coach Dice. He really got this team believing that they can do it. And, you know, they're right behind Montreal. Um, We'll see what happens with those two top teams in the East right now. Right now, I have become a firm believer. And in that game, Calgary offense just looked dead. They just couldn't get anything going. Shout out to Ottawa defense. I've been on them the past year and this year about giving up big plays, and they was just stymied, stymied Calgary. Um, Jake Myers, I think he had a O Canada, O Canada player of the week, player of the week performance last week. Come this week, and he's pretty pedestrian. Um, the whole team is pedestrian. I, I can't even blame it on him. His O line is getting teared up, tore up, and they really can't do much. Um, so. Calgary got to get back on their shit, but right now that was a bad loss. They went out there to Ottawa and didn't look good. I, I expected way more out of a team that I thought was up and coming. Um, Bryce Carter, two sacks that game. So we're on to the Winnipeg-Toronto game. Rudy, uh, it's it's time for me to to dive into Winnipeg. Did you go 0-4 again? No, 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 no. We won in three. We pulled you, won the, you picked Hamilton, right? I picked Hamilton. Oh, thank God. Yes, I picked Hamilton. Um. But Winnipeg loses this game 14 to 16 to Toronto. Toronto has a total of 220 yards of offense, and they win this game. Winnipeg has a total of 430 yards of total offense. Zach Calero throws for over 300 yards. Brady Oliveira close to 100 yards rushing. And this game comes down to overtime. Now, a couple controversial plays happen. Um, I think it was a PI that happened on. Um, Winnipeg's receiver, I want to say it was um, Dembski. Um, they threw a, a nice little curl route. Um, Deshaun Amos come over, breaks it off. Kind of early. They don't call it. He knocks the ball in the air. The DB picks it off, pick six. All right. Okay, I'm, okay I understand. Who, explain, oh. explain this to me. Yes. 16-14 overtime. Toronto scores three points. Winnipeg scores one point. They had I, understand, point. I understand you get the points through special teams. But how does overtime work in the CFL? It's like college. It starts on a, but it starts on the thirty-five yard line. Each team get the ball. So you, how the hell do you get a point? So they kick the field goal, miss the field goal, it goes out the back of the end zone. They so missed. Was, so it missed the field goal. The snap was high, but they still got it down. The kicker missed the field goal earlier in the game. He missed another one. So he missed, and they got a point because he missed. Because it went out the end zone. If the ball, if you don't bring the ball out the end zone. It's a point. What if, it, what if it went through the end zone and it didn't get caught? It's the same? Yeah. If it goes through the back of the end zone, you get a point. So that's just literally called the rules rule. That's just literally what it is. You have to bring the ball out of the end zone. That's what makes the CFL special. You have to bring everything out. But if, you, but if you're incapable. If you don't even get a chance, you lose the point. That's just if what If you happens. don't even get a chance and the ball just kicked through the end zone. So you can miss the field goal. As a team that won a game in, over, in, in, regulation, in regulations, a tie game at the end, they kick it from the 20-yard line and they kick the ball Throughout the end zone, he missed the field goal, but it went out the end zone, and and they couldn't bring the ball out the. End zone. I don't like I don't I don't like that rule. It's I don't a, like I, I don't like that rule for that specific. The end zone is twenty yards. I understand. So I, I don't I, kick I, the ball out the end zone, but it could happen, and it just well well stop them. Don't let them get in the field goal range where they can kick the ball. But out the ball's the given to the thirty-five. But it, so most times you can't kick. That's a thirty-eight yard field goal in the CFL because the the, the, the post is like right at the goal line, pretty much. Forty-two, and then it's twenty yards in the end zone, so it's a sixty-two yard. So kick what, where did they kick it from? The thirty-five. So if they kicked it from thirty-five, no, that one he kicked it from the the, the thirty-three. Thirty, it was thirty-four. It was a forty-one yard field goal. So all he had to do was kick the ball fifty-five yards, like they anyone in the NFL. 
in the air and it's out of the end zone and no one has a chance to catch it. No, so even if it's at the backyard line, the the the, the, the defender could jump up and catch the ball. So you really have to kick the ball about 65, 65 yards through it. You have to really watch it to understand it. But it's, I, it's, I get it, but I that, 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 that it makes that's, it intri- it that's makes the it one thing. Or, that's the one thing I would sit here and say I because I don't. In, that in, one I don't. I, I like the other all the other ones. This one specifically, I'm rewarding you for missing a field goal. Well, bring the ball okay. out or find a way to get a, get the ball out. Again, but if you could kick it if you if you missed it from the 15 yard line, then you get any, the kick, point. any, any so, kicker will put it through the back of the end zone. So it keeps the game a little bit interesting. Now the next team has to make their field goal. Yeah. Or kick it out. They have to make it to win. They have to make it to win regardless. It but. makes it. It makes it exciting. Right. You have to see the. Right. You have to see this overtime champ great cup game that happened where they. I. I, know, I, I they should have the ball out. But he had to kick the ball out the end zone because you could kick it out the end zone also. And the other team got the ball. They got to give them five. Where's the kick off? Where's the kickoff from in the CFL? The kickoff is from the thirty. So you're talking ninety yards. To kick it out the end zone on the kickoff, it it, it never really goes out there. The kickoff in the NFL is from the thirty-five. Still at 30, 30, I don't 40, know. I want to say now. Or it, ain't, it ain't the 40. 35, 35, 35. And they're putting the ball in the, in the fucking stands every time. So, Rudy, you got to so, ma- so the kickers in the CFL aren't as Remember the field, remember it's 80 yards. Remember you're kicking from the, they're kicking from the I, 30. I, I, I understand. I understand. So, and the I 20 yards, and the 20 yards of the end zone. So I 100, understand. 100 yeah. yards. Nobody's kicking. Eight. Oh, yeah, your field is 110 yards. Yeah, right. so nobody's okay. kicking the ball right. out the end zone. They, it usually okay. gets to about the 10-yard line, the 5-yard line. From the thirty, yeah. Okay, that's the, 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 okay. All right, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, NFL they kick it from the thirty-five is fifty, and, they, and, and the guys are landing the ball in the stands now, bro. Sometimes, like that's what that's what they just every time. The, the, yeah, return does not exist in NFL anymore. So, that's what they just changed the stupid rule. So what is that? Sixty-five plus ten. It's Sixty-five plus ten was landing ten yards in the fucking stands. Seventy-five yards. So. And, Okay. And that basically put it almost around the same area, so, somewhat. Okay. So what? Anyways, Calgary, Winnipeg, they 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 get a pick six for Toronto. They give them seven points. They you know because they often couldn't do nothing anemic, and then Winnipeg comes back in the end of the game. It tied up 13-13, Have a chance to win the game. It's a minute left, and Winnipeg runs the quarterback sneak on third down and one yard. But you usually get that every time. Controversial play. Looked like Strebler got the yard, the one yard. He gets every third and one. So I understand why Coach Shea goes for it. But you could kick it, and up and, and Toronto only has 55 seconds to, to get in the field goal range where they only have 150 yards total and 60 yards in the air. So you could do that, or you could say, hey, we're going to get this one yard, and we're going to run the clock out and kick the ball and make sure they get no time. So that's what Coach O'Shea thinks. And Strebler goes for it. Gets tackled. It looks like he got it again. They go to the boot. They say he didn't get it. And that's how that game goes to overtime. And it's just a bad loss for Winnipeg. Their O-line is terrible. That's why they look so bad this year. Their interior O-line is bad. Michael Jackson bad. They can't stop anybody from getting to their quarterback. Zach Caleros was on his back all day long. Five sacks they gave up. Their their one good O-lineman is 38 years old. So they have four bad O-linemen. And one, one, one that's good, but he's 38, he's getting older. He was the, the best old lineman for 10 years in the league. But he's getting older, naturally getting older, so he's having some slippage also. But it's just bad. So when they were going against Toronto D-line, I just knew it was going to be bad because their interior and their D-line brings a lot of pressure. And Zach Caleros, they just couldn't continue drives, and they had five turnovers. You fumble the ball three times, you throw another pick six, and then you have a turnover on down. And that's what's killing them all year. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Their defense is playing good. There's a three-phase game of, you know, that's how you win the game when everybody's playing together. And right now they are not playing complementary football. Like it's either the offense is good, the defense is bad, or the special teams is not so good. The defense has been great, and the offense has been turning the ball over. And it's been their vets. It's been Nick Dembski. It's been Wallatarski. It's been Brady Oliveira. It's been all the players that are staples and no – the importance of the football, and, and Zach has been tripped on an interception. And, and, and they're just bad this year. And I think I'm finally hopping off the bandwagon of Winnipeg. I might pick another team this week and not them, even though their season is on the line. So that's how they get their loss this game. And then the last game of the week, we have Hamilton and Edmonton. Um, Hamilton just goes in there and just mollywop Edmonton, punch them in the face. Um, the game starts off like Edmonton is rolling 6-0, and then 
They get outscored 33 to two the next 30 minutes of the game. Um, McLeod Bethel gets benched. They bring in Trey Ford. Finally, the kid comes in and he goes um, 10 for 15 in the last 10 minutes for 121 yards and three touchdowns to kind of make the game not look so bad. But he scrambled. He broke the pocket. He made plays. He was exciting. And that's how they won games last year with this young kid. They brought him in. He brought some energy. He got the offense going, kept drives alive. He's not the, the best quarterback in throwing the ball and reading zones and, and reading defenses. But, damn it, he could make something happen out of nothing. Like I said, he's the Michael Vick of CFL football. He's just that damn explosive and running the ball and breaking the pocket and, and making your D-line look foolish. And people are going to say, oh, Hamilton laid their foot off the gas. They were up by 30 points, but that's not what happened. They were pressuring this young guy. They tried to blitz him, and he just made him look foolish that time. They tried to run some exotic coverages, and he still made it look foolish. So um, that'll probably be the last week that we see McLeod Bethel as the quarterback. And my problem with McLeod Bethel is galvanize your team. They brought you in to be the quarterback, to lead the team. They, 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 they benched the young kid. And the past two weeks, the past few weeks, he's been complaining about, Oh, we're playing on a short rest. No, galvanize your troops and let them know, hey, we already lost the week before. We're on a short rest. And you're talking about, oh, the CFL don't care about these players because they got us playing on a five-day rest. No, well, it is what it is. You can't change that right now. Deal with that at the end of the year through CFL, PA. But right now, you got to get your, your O-line, your D-line, and the rest of your players to know that we're coming in to win the game. You're already giving excuses for winning a game, and now your whole team – that hasn't won games for the whole past three years. You're not changing the culture of the quarterback. You're giving them more excuses, and that's why y'all losing because you're not being the leader that they need you to be as the quarterback. And now you're bench. They're going to bring in a young kid, and they're going to give him the rest of the reps for the rest of the year and see what he could do if he could turn the team around again like he did last year. And Hamilton balls out. Um, Bo Levi goes for five touchdowns, man. Um 17 for 21, over 300 yards, five touchdowns. Um, Looked like an old Canada, old Canada player of the week nominee. We'll see how that goes. Maybe, maybe not. But that's what happened. Hamilton beat the brakes off of Hamilton, off of Edmonton, 44 to 28, and that's how that week went. So if Hamilton gets me a win, they're on a two-game win streak. Maybe they're turning their season around. I like it. All righty. There we go. That's the recap for week eight. For the yes. CFL, we now jump into Nick's power rankings. Okay. So who are your power rankings of the week? We already know who number one is. We're going to stay, uh, stay at number nine first. We're going nine first. We're going to stay at Edmonton 0-7. Uh-huh. They don't get a win. They're playing bad football. Uh, maybe this new quarterback gives them a spark this week. Felt like he's going to get the start trade for it. Um, <laughs> they stay at nine. Number eight, Winnipeg. Got to move them down. Not playing good ball. Not playing complimentary football. Their O-line is freaking terrible. Give up five sacks. Zach Calero's on his back all day. They're playing like shit. Playing like shit, and it is what it is. Their O-line is crappy. Four or five of them is terrible, and that's why their quarterback's on his back. They can't do long developing plays because Zach has no time. It's not that Zach is, is a bad quarterback. He still could play. He still could throw the ball with the best of them, but – when you have no time and you have to throw shorter routes and they can move the ball up and down the field, but they can't score touchdowns or they find a way to turn it over. Did, did, you, not... did you play with any of these offensive linemen? Yes, I did. Okay. It is what it is, man. I got to call na- it. Na- name them. I'll they're tag them on this one. They're playing bad. It is what I'll it is. I'll tag them, though. I mean, I, mean I don't have to call them out. They know who they are. It's, I don't know who they are. It's four, I mean, out of five of, it's four out of five of them. Is playing bad. So anybody so else? Who's, who's not playing bad? Stanley Bryant, he's still orchestrating. He's not playing great either. I, I'm <laughs> real, and that's my guy. I love him to death. But he's not playing great either, but he's not playing as bad as the rest of them. They, some of them, they can't even move. They can't move laterally. <laughs> they can't move oh. together. They're not making their reads right. They're letting people come in on blitzes, and they're not switching off. Of, of, they're running They're running um, stunts on them, and they can't pass it off correctly. They're just bad. As a so, unit on the O-line. Uh, according to Charles Barkley, they're terrible. They're okay. terrible on the O-line. They mm-hmm. have to do something better. This is a team that's been known for having great O-line play and pushing the other teams around, and that's what a, a standard of, of Winnipeg O-line, and that's just not what's happening right now. And I could call it like I see it. I hate it to, to say right. it is what it is. 
Number seven. Number seven, we got Hamilton. They got two wins in a they're two wins in a row. They're looking better. They're two and five. Bo Levi Mitchell um throwing a lot of touchdowns this year. He's playing well this year. People thought he was done. They written him off a few years ago, but he's but he's back and he's balling. He's doing his thing. He's not the problem over there. When they do lose, it's usually the defense. But their special teams is is giving them some short fields also. Um, who we got at number six? Um, a big drop for Calgary, man. I I, I had to drop him a couple spots. They they came out and they laid an egg. I, I did not like their effort. I did not like how they came out so lethargical, lazy looking, and 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 bad from the whole front. Looked like the offense and the offense led to the defense playing bad and the special team. Um, Toronto at five. I got them right behind Ottawa at four. Ottawa's been rolling five and two. Man, they're turning around over there. It's nothing. It's a great atmosphere when you win in the Ottawa. Those fans come out to support you, win, lose, or draw. And they're finally getting a team that's winning back again because they were a team that was going to championships and great cups for most of my time of playing between 2015 and 2019. And, and then they fell off real big time. But good for them. They're winning again. Shout out to Bobby Dice. I love him. That's my guy. Um, at number three, BC, they had a bye week. So I keep them at three. Sass goes to falls down to two. And Montreal claims their spot back at number one. There we have it, folks. We have Montreal, SAS, BC, Ottawa, Toronto, Calgary, Hamilton, Winnipeg and their trash can offensive line. And Edmonton rolls at number nine with their own, I think, 0 and 7 record. Yeah. Um, can't, can't, you know, can't, uh, what's the word? They can't, uh, can't lay it on a whorehouse on Friday night on payday. Can't get, can't get <laughs> laid in a whorehouse on payday. Got so, it. We jump in now to um, oh Canada. Oh, that's where we at. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. No, no problem. No problem. Wanna, yeah, no one needs to hear your picks that fast. Oh Canada, I'm gonna keep it short. Oh Canada, <laughs> our home and native land. Nick's Nick's. Oh Canada, oh Canada, players of the week. Oh Canada, oh Canada, player of the week, man. On offense aside, um, I think we already nailed it, and we said who it is, man. Bo Levi Mitchell, man, a redemption season. He's balling. He has the young Hamilton uh, team, and 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 their fans feeling that good again. They're thinking that they can make something shake in the um in the East over there on that side of the division. They win in the last two games. That guy throws seventeen for twenty five. Five touchdowns. That is against the worst defense in the league. Um, Edmonton is freaking terrible. They're, this is the worst defensive scheme I ever seen in my life. They don't do anything right. There's no rhyme or reason for why they're running their coverages the way they run their coverages. Why are they blitzing? Or it's just look bad for them. But you take advantage. You play a duck. You make a duck look like a duck. If it's a duck, you make them quack. And that's what Bo Levi Mitchell did last week. He balled out. And then so on the defensive side, I must go to Jake Ceresna, the leader of. Toronto Argonauts defense. He goes against Winnipeg D line O line, and he he gets two sacks. He has four tackles, a, another pressure here and there, and he was just downright a, 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 a maniac, a defensive beast. He he caused so much so much problems in that whole game. So I had to give him the defensive player of the week, along with Toronto whole defense. But I'm gonna give him as the fire starter, the igniter, and give Jake Ceresna as the O Canada, O Canada defensive player of the week. Bo Levi Mitchell, O Canada offensive player of the week, and Jake Ceresna. Yes, sir. Defensive player of the week. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow us, and ring that bell and share this video. Yes, sir. Nick has made you the players of the week. Now, hopefully, it's not like the Madden curse where he just cursed homeboy last week with uh, (laughs) Jake Meyer. Uh, but let's let's let, let's let's see what happens for next week. And I think it was now, Vernon, Vernon Adams of the week. No, I gave it to yeah, Justin. Yeah, yeah. No, I gave it to Justin mm-hmm. McInnes. I gave it to his receiver. Well, they they did they, they play the week. They lost. They, the they lost that game to Calgary the week before after I gave it to him. Okay. So yes, now we jump into the time of the day where Nick gets to tell us and show us that he doesn't know dick about the CFL. Oh, <laughs> Nick, <laughs> make his <laughs> next <laughs> pick. <laughs> when a when a pad kicker makes a kick, if Sass Sass <laughs> offense gets twenty yards in the second half and control the game like they were doing the whole first half, I look like a freaking genius. 
Now so, the game. I was just dead on wrong about that. I can't even say shit about so, that. So, so the first game of the week is BC at uh, Winnipeg. Why y'all do this to me? BC is a three and a half point <laughs> <What>? favorite. <laughs> Winnipeg's at home, right? Yes. Winnipeg's at home, right? Winnipeg has won their last two games at home, right? Winnipeg is notoriously known for winning all their games at home, right? Winnipeg season is on the line, right? There are two and five. They need no two and six. They need to win this week. Give me BC off the bye week. <laughs> With the points also? <laughs> what three and mm. a half? Give me no 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 no. This game comes down to the end. Um BC gets to win. But give me BC for okay. the win, Winnipeg for the points. And then we have Montreal at Hamilton. Montreal's a four and a half point favorite. Um, they get their quarterback back. Their defense is rolling as, as much as Bo Levi is rolling. Uh, give me Montreal to win that game. And the points. And the points. Give me Montreal. All right, and then we jump into. Friday is that Friday? No, it's Saturday. Saturday. Okay, August I covered Edmonton I mean, and Saskatchewan. Trey Ford will make this game interesting and fun, and he will make it a problem for Sass. He will give them everything they can handle, especially stopping the run game up for them and then containing him in the pocket. They did a pretty good job last year until Trey Ford got it rolling later on. But um, give me um, Sass to win this game and give me five and a half. Uh, give me uh. <laughs> Well, they're five and a half point underdogs. They should be double digit dogs. They're getting the shit kicked out of them, for Christ's sake. No, the, the, the quarterback changed this week. No, remember the beginning of the year, they were only losing by three. And now all of a sudden. Well, they, saw, they just got drop kicked. But by a yeah, team so that's not very good. Give, give me Sass and give me Sass with the points. That's how I feel. All right. And the final game of the week is Toronto at Calgary. Toronto's a three and a half point underdog. Calgary's three point. I don't know how they do these these, these lines. Calgary's a three point favorite. They could do it by sure. like I told you, it's the points of the odds for putting it one way or the other. Oh, yeah. Um, give, right, me, so give me Calgary this week. Give me Calgary with the points. Um, then yeah, give me Calgary. Toronto have a quarterback situation that is just not good. Um, Nick Arbuckle replaced the starting quarterback last week, so Winnipeg knocked the quarterback out that week also, and they bring in the uh, the backup and he does shit. And I think Calgary gets back in the role on – they get back in, in the win column at home. I'm going to go with the home team. I, I haven't been going with the home team as much, and it's been it's been my downfall. So I'm going to believe in them. I'm going to roll with the home team, and that's how it's going this week. There you have it, folks. Those are Nick's picks of the week. And uh, what else we got this week, Nick? What Any thoughts, uh, closing thoughts before we jump off? This whole fifth episode. So it's a big thing that's happening in the CFL right now. Maybe not so big yet, but Nathan Rourke, Canadian quarterback. You don't get many of those guys who are top players or take the league by storm the way this kid took the league by storm in 2022. He was amazing. He was throwing about four touchdowns a game until he got hurt. He had BC. He had the whole Vancouver Nation in an uproar. He had TSN panel talking about this guy. He could run the ball. He could fling it. He could throw it with the best of them. So after that year, he leaves. He gets paid to go to the NFL. He signs with the NFL. He's been there in and out of different teams the past two years. And then he finally gets released again by the Giants, which I think he's probably better than Daniel Jones if he gets the chance. The kid can play. He can flat out throw it. He can play football. But, you know, sometimes politics or just, you know, never know what's going on behind the X's and O's in the locker room. But I know Daniel Jones is damn good. And I know he's good enough to be next to Daniel Jones if Daniel Jones was again paid for him $40 million. So he gets released. He gets cleared through waivers. And now is he coming back to the CFL or not? He wants to keep getting another shot at the NFL and being a, a clipboard holder, but well, he could come to the CFL and be a freaking legend. He's Canadian and he could play ball. They don't get how that. Much, how, much, how much do clipboard holders get paid in the NFL? They get paid. They get paid a nice amount. But if you're going to keep getting released and released and not get a chance, then does it make sense? Where well, he could come over? Wait, to wait, the- wait, wait, wait. Not, not get a chance, or is he a clipboard holder? 
he's so he's, well, third, he's the third or fourth stringer. Third or fourth string for the most part. Okay. And then he keeps getting released to another team. Another team gives back him backups clipboards too. The second stringers hold clipboards too. Yes, exactly. But he's like third or fourth string for the most part. Okay. Um, he had a good preseason last year actually. Um, okay. but they let him go. Um, and now it's like, is he coming back to the CFL? I think he should. <laughs> I'm not gonna be in another man. What, what, what would what would he get paid in the CFL? He would get paid a million dollars in the CFL. Really? Would really? As a wow. as a Canadian quarterback with the hype that he has and what he'll mm-hmm. bring to the team, he'll get a million dollars. Whether they giving him a million dollars on the table and they right now like in the contract or in the background or something under he he would get a million dollars. I'm not gonna say anything, Rudy. He's gonna get paid a million dollars. He's gonna get endorsements, he's gonna get sponsorships, the whole city's gonna take care of him. He's not gonna have to pay rent for anything. He, they're gonna put him in a penthouse suite in any, any city that he wants to go to. The only thing is the team that he made his name with is the BC Lions. And Vernon Adams is playing tremendous since he took over for him as you know, when he got hurt, they traded for Vernon Adams and then the past couple of years, Vernon Adams has has made his stake as the best quarterback in the league. But when if Rort comes back, he got his pick of the litter. Which team he want to go to? Which team makes the most sense? That's what we're trying to figure out. Does Calgary give up on Jake Myers, who's been up and down, but he's playing good this year? But do you believe in him as your future quarterback? Does Calgary go out there and make that big move and offer him the whole kitchen sink? Toronto. Do you go make that move? Because we know y'all have the money. Y'all are, you know, y'all get paid. Y'all find a way in Toronto to to make it happen because y'all are the the team of the CF. You know, everything goes through Toronto. Mm -hmm. But Chad Kelly is your quarterback. He's proven to be a quarterback. But can you? You, Chad Kelly's not reliable. Chad <laughs> Kelly wasn't reliable in college. And Chad like, Kelly like, is not like, reliable. Like, and he wasn't reliable in college. So. so anything can happen. Do you like let that that do you let him go and and not pay him after you just gave him a big contract after he come back from his nine game suspension? If he even come back from suspension, I don't know if the commissioner brings him back off the suspension. So do you go get do you go get the quarterback of your dreams of your future? Do you go get Beyonce? Do you just stay with? I'm not even going to say anything. Or, or, you know, and there's other teams, but I'm thinking, or Sass, your your, your starting quarterback's been hurt the past couple years. He's on his last legs. He's getting older. There's so much teams that he could go Mm -hmm. to the pick of his litter, but I would hope that he comes back to the CFL and plays some football. He's been sitting there the past two years, you know, rotting where he could be over here and be a legend in the CFL and get paid. If you're not going to get paid in the NFL, you might get paid about the same amount as the backup like that. But at least you get to play and get paid and have fun and make your name for yourself again. And then maybe the next time you come back out and you want to try to see if the NFL, they be like, well, well, we, we're not, I'm not coming over to be less than a second string quarterback. And then let's have that written in my contract because I have made my name enough in the CFL where I should at least be a second string quarterback if I come back to the NFL. Don't, don't make this a long winded response. But would you rather be a backup who gets paid two million dollars? Mm-hmm. You're not worried about ever playing. You're not worried about ever getting hurt. You're not worried about any ever getting touched. Or be a starter and get paid a million dollars, where you're getting your head wrung. Obviously, I'm speaking from in hypotheticals because people are competitors. Yep. But what would you rather? I'd rather get paid $2 million to do nothing, never get hit. And live in the States. Live, huh? And, and, and live in the States. Uh, and um, be in the NFL, or would I rather make a million dollars playing Canada, get my bell rung, take five years off of my life, because we already know that NFL players live less than regular people, because especially ones that are getting hit in the head. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what would you rather do? The competitor in me says, I want to play football. I want to ball out, and I want to do my thing. It's the competitive side of me. That's just how I You 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 play cornerback. The competitive side of me, but when I come home and I see my wife and my kids, and I'm like, damn, extra million dollars, and I can relax. Uh, But the uncertainty of the NFL, that's the problem for him. 
So if I'm a guy guaranteed, oh, of and, course. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about guaranteed. Yeah. So in a, <laughs> if, if I come to the CFL and my spot's guaranteed, and I'm a legend, and I know I'm gonna make that money back on the back end, and I don't have to come into the office or come into the stadium every day as a third string or the fourth string or practice roster quarterback, and I put my little key card on the fucking door, and and I gotta worry about if it's gonna be green or red. <laughs> um, I'm I'm probably gonna go to the CFL where I'm more secure. And I got the, you know, I can play and, and, and everything is made and I get the endorsements and everything. And I'm, and I'm a king. I'm a legend out there. I'm probably going to go to the CFL because I don't know when my last day in the NFL going to be. And then it could be like, well, you can always come back to the CFL. But then I just wasted a couple of my greatest years to be a, a, a if I want to be like a Hall of Fame type player, I just wasted a couple of years, you know, to get that legendary status. So I would have came back to the CFL just for his his situation, I you know, if you're gonna tell me my my contract is guaranteed for ten years in the NFL for two million as a backup, you know, I'd be like, hey, okay, I'm about to think about it. But this uncertainty for him of being a backup or a starter, not a backup or a practice roster player any day, and they could cut you at any moment and not be obligated to shit to you, I I got to take the chance to go play with my people, and they're gonna love me to freaking death over here. The keys to the city. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, that'll do it for this week's edition of Come On CFL. Remember, we are in partnership with Bet99. So please get your bets in. Sub- subscribe to Bet99. Use our code COMEON99 with capital letters, C-O-M-E-N-E-O-N. You get up to a $1,500 in first bet encore bonus, whatever the hell that means. It's- I believe it means if you bet. And you lose, you get up to the amount of money that you lost. That's what I believe it means. Or even if you win, I, I, that's whatever it means is what it means. Hey, my picks this week. Please bet responsibly, but please jump on Bet99 because when you do, you're supporting us. Because we're busting our ass to bring good content, and it helps us a great deal when you put your bets in. So thank you again so much. Come on, CFL. We will see you next week. Woo!